Hi everybody. A few months ago I went down to Fort Washington, Pennsylvania to the, the Honeywell location that's in there. Honeywell is a big corporate conglomerate that makes a whole bunch of stuff and they were donating a bunch of uh, sensors and PLCs for use at Penn State Harrisburg and one of the things they were tossing out was this really old school vintage Zenith data systems laptop computer called Super Sport or Super Sport something like that so here it is closed up compared to a 12 inch ruler it's 12 inches wide 12 inches long and about a little more than three inches high what a beast and there's the the Honeywell property tag right there got some masking tape covering up the Zenith logo and it's very yellow very yellowed there we go I just changed the white balance to fluorescent since I got a bunch of fluorescent light shining on it and anyway it's yellow the plastic has yellowed over the years I think from the fire retardant that was uh, put into the plastic from computers years ago here's a look at the side we got connector for keyboard external keyboard floppy disk drive of course the power switch the back of it here has DC input I don't have the original power supply but fortunately someone has been kind enough to label exactly what I need to power this thing CRT RS-232 printer and external floppy disk drive and looks like some kind of external bus slot there to put some kind of card in there there's another slot right here I think for another for an optional floppy disk drive telephone connections and or for modem here's information on the bottom model ZWL-184-02 oh and the best part it has a handle so you can carry it around like a briefcase how convenient there's this little slot here on the bottom let's see if I can pry that open oops oh yeah one thing I've noticed is that this plastic is extremely brittle let me see if I can get a tweezers and pull that out tiny piece of plastic I think that just broke off right here there's a, a crack on it right there that's cracked got some tape holding it together right here another piece missing right there and earlier today I kind of cracked the the plastic on the bottom of the monitor here so it's really so I have to be very careful when I play with the monitor but anyway look at this slot right here we got an 8 dip switch and uh, a socket right there looks like a 40 pin socket not sure what for maybe a, a RAM expansion I guess if uh, if RAM was available in that form for this computer and look at that there's another crack right there this thing's about ready to fall apart Here's a close-up look at the keyboard. We've got a very limited function key. It's not like our modern-day laptops where you have all sorts of different FN uh, options up here. This one only had F11 and F12 because the regular function keys only go up to F10. And then we got one here for LCD or CRT selection, and another one for number lock. And we got the the LEDs for these things built into the keys as well as for cap lock down here page up and page down and all those things and uh, little blue numbers right here as for the monitor you can see how it's kind of double hinged here if I lift up on this very carefully there we go so this thing has the ability to lay perfectly flat opening up 180 degrees and there's another plastic piece right here with the with the ribbon cable 
um, underneath it, ribbon cable going up to the monitor. So that's all the electrical and data connections. Everything else here just seems to be mechanical. And of course, brightness, contrast control, and some other LED indicators. In a, and we got one for the right floppy drive, and then left drive, so that's probably going to be here. If there was a floppy drive installed, that LED would be used. All right, now I'm going to try to turn this thing on first before I take it apart to see what kind of goodies we have inside. I have a little power supply here set for 12 volts. Plug it in the back. No smoke yet. That's a good sign. But then again, I don't have the power supply on. There we go. All right, let's see what happens when I turn it on. Wow. It's got a hard drive in there. I can certainly hear it spinning. I'll put the mic up to it. Oh, I see something on the display, just barely. Let me, there we go. Turn up the brightness. Current date is Friday, January 4th, 1980. Enter new date. No, I think I'll just let it there. Current time, good enough. Wow, it's awesome. It already has MS-DOS 6.22. That's good because if it didn't have MS-DOS 6.22, I was going to put it on. Because I got a bunch of original installation discs right here. And also, Windows 3.1 if we feel like it. Let's see what's on this bad boy. Oops, I forgot my MS-DOS codes here. DIR is what I want to see. There we go. I don't know what the heck all this PC Plus is before. I've never seen that with a standard MS-DOS in installation. CD PC Plus. DIR. Whole bunch of stuff. There we go. Let's try this one right here. PC Edit. Look at that. It's got something here. Press any key to begin. <laughs> Wow. End of text. Let's see if we can do here Alt X to save. Don't know where it's saved to. DIR slash P. There it is. Test with no extension. A whopping 37 bytes. I think I'll just delete that. Oh, something else I forgot to look at was the size of the hard drive. So here we've got one megabyte just in this one directory for the PC Plus and then 20 megabytes of free space on the hard drive. So this doesn't tell me how much is actually used on the hard drive but I would expect it to be probably 25 to 30 megabytes maybe even 40 megabytes on this hard drive. There I just turned off the light up above because the backlight for this thing is really dim. I got brightness turned all the way up and contrast seems to be best right around in the middle. Let's see if I can put in a copy of Razdaz in here. Let's see if the floppy drive works. Oh, doesn't like that. 
Let's try another copy of the same thing. Retry. Still, still doesn't like it. Let me just try some other random floppies I have. See if they work. Nope. Not that one. It could be that these are... This is formatted for 144 megabyte, but the the floppy disk drive in here might be only good for a 720 meg uh, 720 kilobyte format. Let me fail that. Go back to C and format A. Wow, it's done. Oh man, look at that. Even worse. 360 kilobyte form or kilo yeah 360 kilobyte format that is one heck of a low resolution floppy disk drive uh oh what happened there looks like the backlight just went out oh it came back on apparently the backlight has its own independent uh, timeout well, everything seems to be working pretty well with this. I'm just going to flip it off here. Nice thing about these old computers with MS-DOS is you could just push the power switch. There's no shutdown or anything. You just flip the switch and it goes off. All right, I just took out seven screws from the bottom and I got to tell you, this thing is real fragile. This part right there, that... That was already cracked before, and then it looked like it was glued together again. And now I just cracked it open again here, trying to pull it apart. If I smash this thing with a hammer or drop it, it would definitely just crumble into a million pieces. Oh, oh man. Okay. That's why the monitor is still attached to that piece. All right. Well, the monitor opened pretty easily there. It's spring-loaded for sure. Let me disconnect this. And here's some pieces that have fallen out. The, uh, the nice metal insert for the screws. The plastic is just completely crumbled. I don't know if I did that or if it was already loose. I did hear some things rattling around inside before I took it apart. Okay, so at first glance we can see that there is certainly a, a hard drive in here and it's right here. So there's no room for an external floppy disk drive. Although I guess that could be an option when you when you buy this thing initially. You could get it with a, with a cheap floppy drive on here or really expensive. Um, however many megabyte this is. I don't know, 30 or 40 megabyte hard drive. Let's see if we can get a closer look at that. Okay, so first, I think I gotta take off this keyboard. There we go, lifts up nice. Ribbon cable connection here. And while we're at it, let's have a peek at the keyboard, at the circuit board here. Look at that. It's a PCB. And every individual key is its own individual switch. Its own independent push button switch. That's amazing. All in each one is an individual switch soldered onto the circuit board there. Let's have a look at some other things here. We got a little piezo buzzer right here. What's underneath this copper sheet? on a connector right here wow oh my god I have no idea what this is let me take this off too that piece doesn't come off I think that's this ribbon cable connector is directly soldered onto it let's take off this screw which this was already kind of loose I think maybe the the plastic had broken underneath it Anyway, let's see what this is. 
So we got some kind of EEPROM on here. We got a Sony part, a couple of Toshiba flat packs here, and a little ceramic board here with a few things on there. That's a 74 LS123, and this one is a 74628, it looks like, the one on the top. And this one right here, classic, 74HC04, hex inverter. And these screws are all stuck here because of the plastic that is supposedly broken underneath them. I'm having a hard time getting this one out. A little bit of finagling and I got it out. And you can see what I mean. All these plastic pieces that the screws go into, they're all down here on the bottom and some of them still attached to the screw and detached from the plastic case. That's why I can't get them out. I need to put a pliers on these things and hold it down while I take out the screw. And that's what I did for this one right here on the hard drive. Should be able to take it off now. Finally, there we go. Oh man, there's no information on it. I guess I should have looked at the BIOS first. The computer set up BIOS before I uh, turned it on or after I turned it on. But man, look at that. They certainly don't make them like this anymore. So that's just standard three and a half inch discs in there. And I won't take it apart any further. I want to keep this computer in working condition when I'm done. But that's the connector to the motherboard and here's the connector going to the the uh, inside of the machine here to the read write head. And one thing I can point out is that this is a stepper motor right here. So it doesn't have the neo the so it doesn't have the neodymia magnet and the, the coil with the arm flipping back and forth, it has a stepper motor that controls an arm that it may go back and forth like that or it may go in a linear fashion like that. On second thought, I think I will take the circuit board here off of the, the hard drive. Just as long as I don't open up the disc case, it should still be in working order once I put it back together. Surprisingly, these screws seem to be metric. I'm using a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench here. And that just pops right off. Let me take this one off here. And okay, I'm glad I did take it apart now because I can see that I was wrong. Initially, I said that this was the uh, connection to the, to the read-write head, but no, that's the, the main stepper motor for the... For the, or the uh, brushless DC motor that turns the, the hard disks inside. Then we got this connector here for the stepper motor that positions the head and the head itself looks like it's going to be on a single axis right there swinging back and forth like that on, a, uh, on that axis and the data transmitted from the head that's going to be right here on this flex cable. All right, here's a closer look at the circuit board. That looks like the motor driver for the uh, for the main spindle motor. There's a motor driver for the stepper motor for the read-write heads. And everything else is just data, transmission, and handling stuff here. Got some nice little toroidal inductors. And a few bodge wires, too. And the LED that blinks whenever the hard drive is doing anything, it's uh, completely invisible from the outside because this is the case that goes over it. There's no hole for that LED right there. Also, while we're looking at circuit boards, here's the modem that was plugged into this slot right here. It just pulls out. It's, it's removable from the outside, too, if you take off this little removable cover, too. You can... Uh, just yank it out without taking the whole cover off and nothing nothing I haven't seen here before typical stuff with these old modems got the isolation transformer right there and uh, date codes for these things are around 1987 
or uh, 88. Let's see, where did I see? Yeah, there's 8833. This chip is 8818. So it looks like this computer, and I've looked at looked at some date codes on this other board here. We got an 8829 on this one, 8831. So definitely right in the middle of 1988 is when this thing would have been made. Now here's a little detail I noticed on the hard drive circuit board. These two capacitors are soldered side by side to each other on a space that looks like it's intended for only a single cap. So I don't know what chip this is. That cap is hooked up to this 3771M79. That's probably the date code right there. But I guess they needed double the capacitance, but they didn't have a physical capacitor that was double the value, so they literally doubled the capacitance. And here's another unfortunate circumstance with this hard drive. It may be working now, but probably not for much longer because you can see right here on these pins, it's all nice and shiny solder. But here it's starting to look old and crusty. And even on these pins here, and that's probably, in fact, that's definitely from the electrolyte from this capacitor. It's leaking onto the board and it's even darkening the color of the the traces here the green solder mask can't really make it out too well on camera but trust me there is certainly some discoloration there and even down here it looks like this capacitor is also leaking there's some crusty stuff around this cap and uh you can see some solder in these whoa what the heck looks like a piece of solder just popped out of that via That's how bad it's gotten. That, that electrolyte is just eating away at everything. And also at the at the wire here. It's kind of green color down here at the base of the wire going up to the inductor. And this 74628, that's got some crusty pins on it right here. Here's a better look at that inductor. The first wire I pointed to, that one's fine. But the really ugly one is this right here. All that green gunk. You can see that tiny little piece that I managed to flake off of it. 